On today's Maker Mashup, part one of our DIY Core XY build series. So today is gonna to be day one of our DIY Core XY build series. Now this is the layer fused X301 printer that was developed by Nick Hoggart and myself. And we're gonna be going through the electronics enclosure and the frame today, building that from the ground up. And then in future videos, we'll be assembling the rest of the printer. Now down in the description, you'll find a full bill of materials for this project as well as other helpful resources to help you build this printer. And if you are interested in this printer, want to learn more, there's a card at the top that will get you to the introduction video that will certainly help you source your parts and learn about what you're getting into in building this printer. So in building the frame today, I want to cover what we're going to be working on. The frame design here goes ahead and uses a solid metal build plate. I picked this up at a local uh, manufacturing place where they sell called metal uh, supermarkets and they sell uh, metal plates like this, but you can get plates like this at your big box store as well. This is what the foundation of our electronics enclosure is going to be. So we'll be able to drill holes into this plate. Uh, they'll be stood off here by these TPU feet that we printed. Those are all included in the models. And then we're going to use these at the top. It's the only 3D printed part of the bottom base, and that's actually at the top, not the bottom. And then what we're going to use is the 2080 here to create the bottom. And then we're all going to have our 2040 extrusion for some uprights near the front and some 2020 extrusion as part of our base. And it will also be in the rear of the printer as well, hooking into these 3D prints. So if you need help with this, you can always check out our Discord. And don't forget to subscribe so that way you don't miss any of the upcoming videos of this build series. And with all that said, let's get to work. Today's build really focuses on the frame itself. We're going to be drilling holes in that metal plate, and then we're going to assemble the electronics enclosure. After that, we'll attach the frame uprights, install the bottom plate and feet, and then we'll add the top framing. After that, we'll install the pulley towers and then wrap everything up by installing the stepper mounts. If you have everything ready to go, this part of the build should only take a couple of hours to complete. We're going to start here by using the TPU feet as a guide for marking the holes that we need to drill in our aluminum extrusion. Now you can see here, I'm just aligning this with the corner. And once I do that, I'm using the pencil here to mark the corners. And we're going to do that on all four corners. You're also going to use this guide to mark one center hole in the center of the plate on each of the four sides. This adds some additional stability when we screw everything to the base. Now I'm going to use a punch here so it makes it easier for the drill bit to grab onto the metal plate for each of the holes. Now we're just gonna use the drill press to put some holes in. You can use a regular hand drill for this as well. I like the drill press because it makes it a little bit easier to do all the repeat holes. Now we're just gonna to wanna to use a file to file down any of the rough edges left by the drill. You want to make sure that you get this pretty flush and it should only take a couple seconds with a hand file and this will allow the base to be pretty solid and it will add to the overall structural strength of the base itself. Now we're going to use these inside corner brackets to assemble the bottom electronics enclosure and you'll need the grub screws that come with it as well. Those will be used to hold everything together from the inside corners. You'll find everything goes a lot faster if you pre-assemble these corner brackets before you try to install them on the extrusion. Now we're just going to insert these into the 2080 extrusion and then you're going to connect all three of the 2080 extrusions together. Thank you. 
Once you have all three pieces of the 2080 put together, you're gonna to wanna to use the 2020 extrusion and you're gonna put one on the top and this will fit on the inside of the 2080 extrusion. Once you have this first one in, you're gonna to wanna to flip everything over and then you're gonna to wanna to repeat the process and install another piece of 2020 on the top here as well. Now, the reason we use 2020 here instead of another piece of 2080 was so that way the electronics and wires and cabling can all feed through there. Now we're gonna work at attaching the upright pieces in the back. This is some 2020 extrusion and you're gonna to wanna to use one of those inner corner braces as well. You may have to reverse the grub screw on it to make it work for the back of the 2020 going up as you can see here. But once you get this aligned, you're gonna to wanna to tighten this up and secure it. And then after that, you're gonna put the 2020 on and this is gonna add some additional additional stability to this upright going up the back of the printer. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the bonding plate to the upright here. And this just uses the screws that come with the bonding plates and links for all these are in the description. Once this is all tightened up, then you're going to want to repeat the same process and install the upright on the other side of the printer. Now we're gonna measure 180 millimeters from the edge of that back upright that we put into place. So if you just align the ruler in there and measure 180, you'll be exactly where we need to install the 20 by 40 uprights. Once you have the bonding plate in place, you're gonna to wanna to tighten it up. And then afterwards, you're gonna to wanna to put another bonding plate attaching this 2040 in the opposite direction. Once this is complete, you're gonna to wanna to repeat the process on the other side for the other 20 by 40 upright. Once you have all of the uprights attached, you're gonna to wanna to turn the printer on its side, and then we're gonna work on attaching the TPU feet to the bottom of the base plate, and we're going to then also attach the base plate to the bottom of the printer. You're going to want to go ahead and insert all of the screws into the bottom base plate before trying to attach it to the bottom of the printer. Once you have everything lined up and all of the T-nuts are facing the right direction, then you're going to want to attach the plate to the bottom of the printer and begin tightening everything up. It may take a little bit of wiggling and in some cases I had to uh, tap the end of the base plate with a rubber mallet to go ahead and adjust the plate so everything would fall into place. But everything will fall into place. It just takes a little bit of effort. Now that we have the printer upright, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the 3D print to go ahead and attach that to the printer. Now we're punching out the sacrificial layers and they're designed so that way they do punch out. It's not a flaw in the design, it's so that way you don't have to have supports when printing these prints out. Once you have the holes all cleared out, then we're gonna wanna go ahead and drop the M5 screws into the two pieces that will attach the extrusion from the bottom. And then we're gonna also drop some M5 screws and some T-nuts into this part of the print as well. And that's gonna to attach to the 2020 extrusion at the top. Now we're gonna slide the base onto the 2020 extrusion and then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is flush on the inside so that way it's meeting up with the channel itself. Then you're gonna to wanna to tighten everything up and repeat the process for the other side. Now that we have both prints in place, the next step here is that we're going to be attaching the 400 millimeter long 20 by 20 extrusion. These slide into both channels on each side and 
Then after you've got them slid in and the T-nuts aligned, you're gonna drop that in place and then tighten these up. Now that the rear one is in place, we're gonna go ahead and attach the side rails. Now, each one of these slides in the channel the same way that the rear one did. So you're gonna need to make sure that you line up those T-nuts. Once that side rail is in place, then our next step here is to go ahead and attach the bonding plates here uh, between the 2040 and the 2020 extrusion, and that will add additional strength and rigidity to the printer. And like the other one, we're gonna go ahead and add two bonding plates here to the 2040, one facing the other direction. Once you finish this side, you're gonna wanna repeat the process for the other side of the printer. Now we're going to attach the right and left towers. You're going to need an M5 by 12 millimeter screw and three regular nuts. Now these M5 nuts press into that bottom part of the tower. And then what we're going to do is drop screws in through the holes in this part. And we're going to attach the right and left parts of the tower just by screwing it in. And those nuts should draw up. You want to make sure that your screw is at least a 12 millimeter long screw. If it's a little bit short, you can use a longer screw in here as well. They just stick out from the bottom. Last but not least, we're going to insert some M5 screws in here. And what we're going to do is now attach the stepper mounts. These just slide on to the end of the 2020 extrusion. And once you have those slid on, all you're going to want to do then is tighten them up and then do the same thing for the other side. And that's it for the frame. Okay, so I think we had a really good build for our first day here. We have the frame fully assembled here. Uh, as you can see here, we've got a very sizable electronics enclosure that's included in here. And we owe all that to the 2080 extrusion uh, that we put in here. Uh, all of our feet are in place here. So our TPU feet have a good solid base for the printer. It feels very solid. Uh, we've got the rear towers are now installed. That's what these are called here are the rear uh, towers for the idler bearings. And we'll install those when we get to the carriage. Uh, and then we also put the stepper mounts in today. The nice thing about that is this looks like a 3D printer. Uh, so we made a lot of really good progress on it and I'm very excited. So one thing you're gonna wanna do once you do finish the assembly of the frame is go back and make sure that all of the screws are tight. Uh, a lot of times what happens is as you're moving the printer around, as you're turning it over to get all these pieces in place, some of the screws do get tight or there's always a chance that uh, you might not have tightened one. So go back now before the printer is fully assembled and make sure that everything is square and everything's tight. This is really a critical stage of the printer as this frame is the foundation for everything else that we're gonna do with this printer going forward. So down in the description, you should find a bill of materials for this, and there will be links to the 3D printed parts that are gonna be available on Thingiverse. Now, one thing to note that as the series is still progressing, you may not find all of the materials in the bill of materials or the models. Uh, that will go on as the series progresses. I'm using the video series as kind of the final QA of the parts and the links to all of the different parts in the bill of materials uh, to different vendors that have this. So um, if you don't see a part in there, uh, I know those are coming. So just wanna let you know they will be coming as the video series progresses, but you should have everything in the description and the bill of materials uh, to follow along this far. So if you need help building this at all, there are links down in the description to our Discord. And that is just an open maker space where we talk about all sorts of different things. It's community-based, so you'll get help from any of the people that are online at the time. It's not really technical support, but more of a community. And that community can help you get this printer or any other project that you're working on uh, put together and worked out. If you'd like to help support this project or the channel as a whole, please consider becoming a Patreon member. Patreons have exclusive access to resources and content that can help you with this project or other projects. So it's a good way for you to get a little bit more assistance on a project like 
like this and help support the channel as a whole. So if you enjoyed the video today, please make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos of the X301 series. So with that, I'm going to say thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.